In this tutorial I'm going to be talking about how to paint an ear and I'm filming this in real time so I'm going to try and paint this really fast so I can show you the entire process. So I'm going to be using this rectangular chalk type brush that's pretty much just a Photoshop default and I'm just going to fill in like the base color for the ear. So I'm trying to pick like a, a good skin tone that I can use as the base. And I'm just going to fill in the large shape of the ear. And again, I'm not really using any reference for this, I'm just trying to use what I remembered from anatomy class and just from observation. Ears can be pretty tricky and pretty fun to paint because there's a lot of different shapes and there's a lot of rounded objects that kind of um, curl around in on themselves. And a lot of people don't really spend very much time on the ears, I guess they don't really think that they're very important or anything. Because a lot of paintings I see, they just kind of block them in very um, generically, I guess. They don't really spend too much time figuring out what the forms are actually doing. So now I'm just blocking in the main forms using a lighter color, like a lighter skin color. And I'm just mapping out like the, the helix and the anti-helix and all that. And I'm switching into the round brush. I'm just going to try and paint in some of the shadows over here. Now all ears have a basic shape, but every person's ear is going to be a little bit different. Like the, the earlobe, there's free-floating earlobes and attached earlobes and the shape of the helix and the anti-helix and all that, those are all going to be different um, according to each person. Now this area over here that I'm painting, it's kind of like a little valley in your ear, so I'm painting in the shadows down there. And this part of the helix kind of wraps around and goes into that little valley area. And this dark part over here is actually where the ear canal is, so it's going to be the darkest because it's actually going into your head. Now most of these forms are kind of like cylinders, I guess, or tubes. It's like the helix up here, it's going to be like rounded objects, so you're going to have shadows on the sides and then uh, a highlight like in the middle. Same with the anti-helix. Now learning the parts of the ear is pretty easy. There's pretty much just four major parts. There's the helix, the anti-helix the tragus and the anti-tragus, so I mean, it's pretty easy to remember. And of course there's the earlobe, but I mean, I think pretty much everyone knows the earlobe. The other tricky thing about ears is that a lot of times they're pretty transparent, so if you have light coming from behind the person, a lot of times the ears will get really red or orange because the sun is shining right through them. So getting the amount of redness in the ear can be a little tricky sometimes. So even when I'm painting something like an ear, I'm still thinking about edges, like where can I have sharp edges and where can I have soft edges. And a lot of times like on the anti-helix, like right where it, it turns, like I have that highlight there. That's A lot of times that's going to be a pretty sharp highlight. And then right behind it kind of where the helix meets the anti-helix like a lot of times there's going to be a sharper edge there So at this point it's been about five minutes and I have pretty much the entire ear shape down. I mean this could be a perfectly fine stopping point for most people, but I'm just going to take it a little further and refine some of these areas and try and add in some of the shadow shapes a little better and just kind of refine things.
So remember, all of these forms are folded over in kind of like cylinders or tubes, so you're going to have this highlight on the top of them, or in the middle. I didn't really like the fold up here, so I'm just going to go back and repaint that, kind of change the shape of it a little bit, and kind of have these shadows kind of wrap around the edges, or the forms. Just pushing some of the highlights a little bit too. And I'm also going in and just putting in some more darks. Kind of make this the form so uh, a little more three dimensional. You can read a little bit better. And I think I've pretty much just been painting on one layer the entire time. That's because, you know, I know what I'm painting and I'm not making changes that I'm not sure if I'll like or not. So I'm just treating this as if I would like a normal traditional painting. And again, I'm flipping the canvas back and forth using the keyboard shortcut of Command F that I set myself in the keyboard shortcuts, which is Edit uh, Keyboard Shortcuts. That's just so I can check my changes or check to see if I have any errors in my painting. And also, sometimes it's easier to paint in one direction as opposed to another direction. Like it depends what if you're left-handed or right-handed. Sometimes it's easier to make a certain diagonal shape in one direction. I'm just checking to see what it looks like from further away to see if my forms and everything are reading. Another thing people always ask me about is skin color and that can be a little tricky too. So I'm going in doing color balance and I'm just adding a little more blues and cyans into the ear just so that it's not so orange looking. Like a lot of times people make skin very orange skin is actually made up of a bunch of different colors like if you look at your skin you can see like a lot of blues and greens from things underneath your skin since the skin is pretty translucent and I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see what it looks like closer up and that's about it thanks